2023 is an emotional year for both SpaceX and its fans as after a long wait, we finally get to witness the company's giant rocket starship take to the skies not just once, but twice. And with the achievements the company has achieved this year, fans have even more hope for a starship boom in 2024. However, while the new year is only a few weeks away, there are still many open questions surrounding the reason for the Super Heavy's explosion during a recent flight. In order to end the year perfectly, recently Starbase General Manager Kathy Luters had a valuable sharing session about two initial Starship orbital test flights. Through that, she also revealed many interesting and new information about SpaceX's Starship operations plan in South Texas for the foreseeable future discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Kathy Luter's sharing session took place intimately at an invitation-only event at the Brownsville Event Center on Tuesday, December 12th. It can be said that this presentation would not have occurred in Texas, but instead in Florida if the FAA had not turned the green light for two Starship test flights, one on April 20th and the other on November 18. Yes, Elon is not kidding. Last year, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk shook up local SpaceX supporters when he said Starbase could be better suited as the company's advanced research and development location. Cape Canaveral would serve as Starship's main operational launch site. It's considered the response to the extended delays in an environmental review of the FAA ahead of Starship's IFT-1. Fortunately, as you can see, Starbase is by far the main launch site for Starship, and Texans this time had the chance to listen to looters discuss details of the second orbital test flights. After getting a bulk of lessons from the April 20th event, SpaceX's team eagerly entered the second flight in November, which marked a big leap on the journey to get the Mars of Starship. Like IFT-1, IFT-2 likewise ended with the booster and Starship self-destructing. However, unlike the maiden launch, this time the giant rocket reached a new milestone given that it was eligible for the hot stage separation. Following the success of the separation, Super Heavy reignited the second ring of the Raptor to provide maximum gimbal for the flip maneuver and at the same time kick off the boost backburn. However, this is where the problem occurs. During the actual flip maneuver, B9 suffered three engine failures. Once it finished flipping, it appeared to stop for a few seconds before quickly losing all remaining engines. Since the top of the booster is now facing down, we cannot observe the engine turning off. However, even from this angle, it is clear that at least three engines exploded catastrophically. The third and final engine failure was even more violent than the first two. The blast came from the center section of the booster, indicating the collapse of the tank shells and an uncontrolled mix of fuel and oxidizer. However, the venting of the propellant was clearly visible from the engine section as well. All that points to multiple structural failures. Immediately afterward, two shiny objects, possibly two halves of the cylindrical shielding that surrounds the power head of the center engines, were launched from behind the booster rocket. It seemed that the shield was able to stop two-thirds of the engines from exploding, but one of them failed. By considering the errors in Super Heavy's engine section, SpaceX's GM said, Starship's anomaly investigation team has more data to look into why the November 18 flight's automated flight termination systems were activated. Despite not being perfect, at least Starship's performance recently demonstrated that the hot staging technique worked on the rocket on this scale. After this big step, Luters also revealed about testing the remaining parts of the system in future flight tests. If you have followed my YouTube channel long enough, perhaps you know that one of SpaceX's New Year plans is to fully test the re-entry of Super Heavy. The former NASA human spaceflight chief also confirmed this. 
This next year is going to be really, really critical for us to continue to test out and being able to kind of move the Starship into its next level of being able to accomplish its mission. Along with us looking at reuse of the booster and being able to perform landing operations. Our goal is to be able to bring the big booster back and be able to use it and turn it around and launch again. In a video, Elon's SpaceX is taking a huge risk of catching the world's largest rocket ever posted on December 5th. I analyzed the possibility that SpaceX will build secondary launch pads dedicated to testing the Mechazilla system to catch Starship Super Heavy. You know, conducting the test on the current launch pad is very dangerous because there are many infrastructures around. My prediction is also suited to another notification of Kathy Luters saying that a second orbital launch pad is on tap. That means did they watch that video of mine and decide to construct one more pad? Oh my god, I'm just kidding because the launch pad construction activities might have started a pretty long time ago. The first signs of it came in November 2023 when the media recorded the pieces of a new Starbase orbital launch tower arriving from Florida. This signal showed that SpaceX was indeed building a second launch tower at Starbase. Even in 2021, SpaceX proposed an expansion of Starbase, including a second tower. It includes launch site modifications of the Starship vertical launch area, which will be expanded with additional landing pads for testing and orbital launches. Under that plan, there would be the integration of launch towers for Starship and its super heavy rocket booster, as well as associated stormwater management features and a vehicle parking lot for employees. The proposed expansion will impact 10.94 acres of mud flats, 5.94 acres of estuarine wetlands, and 0.28 acres of non-tidal wetlands. Despite all speculations under the presentation, Luders just mentioned that the second pad is necessary for SpaceX's goal of a faster launch cadence. SpaceX is in the process of obtaining launch licenses for not only the third, but also the fourth Starship launch. They also love to have multiple launches next year, and of course, the time between those launches would be cut down significantly once SpaceX's rockets and its infrastructure improve day by day. This requires more OLM structure to adapt Starship's high flight cadence. It's basically a technical matter, so how about the social aspect? As you know, to make the company's Boca Chica complex its premier manufacturing, launching, and operational center for Starship as SpaceX expected, the support of local people is essential. In the Tuesday discussion, Starbase's general manager gave a timely response to complaints from a population near the Starbase launch site. After IFT2, there were several complaints about how the launch noise affected surrounding residential areas. Looters does not deny the fact that noise is an inevitable consequence of rocket launch. Her house two miles away from the launch site was unscathed despite the intense vibration, noting that SpaceX measures sound and vibration levels across the board to make sure they're within limits agreed to by the FAA for each launch. SpaceX will continue to monitor how weather and wind conditions and cloud cover affect, how sound carries and use that data to inform area residents what to expect with future launches, she added. In addition, SpaceX also came up with the idea of keeping its test operations away from the beach so that it did not impact operations that were near the beach. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.